Hi, Jacinta. How are you? I'm well, thanks. How are you? Good, thank you. It's quite the background. <laughs> thank you. I know you're super busy. Yeah, is there anybody else joining? Yeah, Nate's going to hop on. We were just in another meeting, so we had to, okay. you know, say our goodbyes and then hop on this one. I hear you. <laughs> But we didn't get that many um, responses from members and the ones we did get, they were kind of brief. They're a little short. Like, remarkably brief. No, I, I saw... Um, Hi, Nate. Nate's here. Car Ka Hi. Both Karen and Karen responded, although maybe one of them only sent to me and, oh. and then Pat. Yeah. That's all I saw. Pat, Karen. Yeah. I Lindsay's don't, been I don't a little think... MIA these days, okay. so I... Um, I hadn't reached out to her individually, but maybe sure. I'll remind her. Cool. Nate, did you want to say anything? You want me to do? You know, I can. Yeah, I thought Chris would join us, but she's in another meeting. So, yeah. Um, yeah no, thanks for meeting with us, Erica. We were, sure. um, you know, we wanted to talk about, you know, kind of what the DRB is looking at for the design guidelines and how it integrates with what Dotson is doing for the downtown design standards and just kind of get your thoughts on that. Um, and then, you know, see how we can either facilitate or just talk about it. Sure. I appreciate the opportunity to chat about it. Um, so the, the, the DRB member who raised up the idea that we might address the design of the standards um, has not been participating in the dialogue recently. Um, they've had a lot on their plate, Lindsay, and not able to, to come to so many of the meetings and we really haven't heard from her much. The other members are really kind of more focused on uh, not so much the substance of them, but like how they're presented. So between those two things, I mean, I have my own opinions and I'll share those in a minute, but between those two things, it's like kind of nothing's happening, right? The the conversations are about like making the language a little bit simpler to follow. I may be changing the formatting. Um, they aren't on the substance. Um, and in some ways, I think that's good because I feel like we should be paying attention to what Dodson and Pinkler are doing. And I don't want to be engaging in some deep dive into this, knowing that they're also, and we're not communicating. Um, so that's kind of the everybody else part of the picture. My own feelings about it are that there are some substantive things that I feel that we should consider. But again, like if we're moving towards more towards the language of form-based code, changes that we make to the, the design review board standards are going to be a little cart before the horse. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, no, it's, yeah, no, thanks. I, that's good to know. I'm, Cause I know the DRB had talked about updating the standards, you know, like a year ago or more before Dodson was on board. And so, um, I know that there's now they're parallel tracks. I, I, I actually, you know, the table you came up with or that Rob Wachilla had done, and, you know, it's like a table of contents with a lot of, um, elements. I actually, I think that's really good. And I mean, my thought would be, I think it's good to have the DRB talk about it. And then I think that would be given to, I think it should be given to Dodson. Okay. And, I, you know, I think that having those conversations are good. You know, in terms of form-based code, Dodson's asked, like, are they writing the zoning? And we're not, we're not asking them to, we're asking them to come up with design standards. Right. But those design yeah. standards could. Yes depending on who shows up at the meetings, right? right, right. Um, be more explicit right. about design and form than they are now. I think yes. I always appreciate that our current design review allows for a difference in style <laughs> and uh, makes space for contemporary architecture. Right. Um, I yeah, don't know no, what's going to yeah. happen. So, you know, I'm hope, but yeah, so I, yeah, <laughs> I'm hoping that, you know, we, their design, um, 
standards that we we like, say like Ithaca or some other communities, they're pretty detailed, but they allow yeah. for flexibility. Yeah. And so I'm hoping Dotson is something similar. And you know, we've talked about then referencing them in the zoning bylaw so that they're not incorporated into the bylaw. And maybe there's pieces that inform zoning changes, whether it's setbacks or things, and maybe yeah. right into the town or staff would then say, okay, let's do a form-based code zoning amendment, but we're not having that be part of the process right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So I was a little worried that like, oh, wow, you're going to, you know, the GRB is going to come up with, you know, all these new design standards that may or may not be, you know, separate from the work that Dodson's doing. And I think, I think you could, I, I think actually having the GRB talk about it and I think providing it to Dodson will be very helpful because okay. um, you have That's experience, great. you have experience, you know, trying to apply some of the language and, I mean, I think even saying, well, it's helpful and not helpful, right? So like, is the language so vague that it's hard or is it good because it allows for new design form and architecture? And I think that would be really helpful for um, Dodson. You know, they've had stakeholder groups and I don't know if anyone from the DRB has attended and they're, you, you know, know having... I was able to go to the first one and right. like every other thing that they've scheduled has had a, I've had a time conflict with Right. you know, personal or professional yeah. duties. Yeah. So yeah. Um, unfortunately, and I was actually eager to participate this weekend, but it just, right. you know, it, this past yeah. week, it didn't work out. Yeah. I think that um, Rob did get us started um, and he, he did some kind of like trying to consolidate in some places and then expand in others based on a conversation that we had had at the, the meeting beforehand. Um one of the things that I find challenging is that the language of around, say, something like proportion can apply to the building vis-a-vis -vis its context and can apply to, say, the elements of the building vis-a-vis -vis its facade um, or its overall mass. And that's the way that I'd like to kind of reshape the, the building, uh, reshape those standards is like, yes, we care about all of these things size and proportion or massing and proportion might get lumped together, but that's different when we're looking at windows relative to wall space and the building relative to its neighborhood. And that's the kind of distinction that I am inclined to make. Um, not so much in the, the kinds of things that we're looking at, although interestingly, like, landscape, lighting, signage, they all get kind of like lumped in at the end, right? Um, and 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 I think that we could kind of elevate a couple of those, a couple of those things by naming them. So you know what you just said I think would be really great to get to Dodson. Um because uh, you know, for instance, you know, they've they'll say that the Kendrick uh place, you know, the building on the near the rotary or roundabout will not fare very well in a visual preference survey. And so actually they just published a visual preference survey. We put it up like the other day. Oh good. They didn't yeah. they didn't they didn't use uh they didn't use that image, but they said often doesn't do well. And I I've asked them, but they've never said exactly why. Um, you know, and so um in our survey and in some places we've asked for comments from the from the user to say like why did you say yes or no or not as much, you know, appropriate or not like as much, because I think in their previous surveys, they just, you know, that's just like a rating and people say from one to five, how much do you like or not like it, but then you actually don't know why. Right. And so my guess right. is, is it materials, is right. it because it's too close to the sidewalk? Is it because right. it's out of scale with its neighbors? Right. Is yeah. it the window patterns are a little, you know, asymmetric and people find that different. Right. And so, right. yeah. And so, I, yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I'm hoping that through the standards we have, um, narrative and visualizations that will help so that if a project comes to downtown, you know, we, it'll help the, the applicant and the permitting boards to say, okay, here's, here's the options you can choose, but it also empowers the boards to say, you know, it is too close to the street. You know, we can, we want it back five feet because, you know, we're having a narrow sidewalk or given your height, this is what we think is the appropriate setback yeah. because, you know, we, right now the planning board, struggles with that. So with 11 to 13 East Pleasant, you know, they felt like the language wasn't good enough or strong enough for them well, the, to say. Yeah, no, the zoning allowed it, right? So it's right. like, and then the, the, the DRB is not the, is not the board right. that's going to say, we can't, we can't allow this project to go forward. We, A, have no right. teeth, but also it's designed within the zoning code, right? Like mm -hmm. we, right. <laughs> so, I mean, 
we we don't we don't have a lot of um a lot of say so i mean i i love the idea of a future drb that has a little bit more uh, i guess for lack of a better word authority but yeah i, no, I mean, think that like when the zoning allows for something to be right on the sidewalk and 60 feet tall then we have to support it mm -hmm. yeah yeah, and that's why I was saying through this process, I either want to have no DRB or give the DRB more power, right, or authority yeah. because, you know, it, or, you know, it. I feel like sometimes it's an odd position for the design review board. We used to tell people it's mandatory um, advice. <laughs> and then, yeah, you know, right, then right, they're, right. And then they Well, and sometimes it. the planning board doesn't listen to us either. So right. it's not like, yeah. But I do, I mean, in, in making it, ha having the DRB have more sticking power um may be problematic because you have folks on the committee who don't necessarily have that knowledge base right you know or it's like you know we were talking about is it can we integrate the drb review into planning board or yeah. permitting in downtown a little in a little more formal way and so yeah. yep. you know you know you know there's probably a few different different ideas um, For sure. but, I mean, I like the idea. I did like the the table of contents that Rob came up with, and I guess it was based on a you know DRB meeting, and you know, and so I, I still you know it's I think it's fruitful for members to talk about it, and you know whatever might be, then you know I think having all that provided to Dotson is is good because, okay. um, you know, they're meeting with different stakeholders, different groups of people, and um, you know, it, you know the the design review board was named as you know say a a relevant board or committee that would be involved later in the process, kind of reviewing the standards, but it'd be good to get the input in before sure. they're already okay. formulated. And so, yeah, I, I think that's, I mean, to me, that'd be a really nice way to fold it in. Um, and we can let Dodson know too, uh, you know, we were trying to minimize how many individual boards or committees they would go to. And so what we, you know, what we'd said later in the process is they would hold meetings and have you know a few boards come to them, so you know it'd be whether it's an in-person or virtual meeting where there'd be the planning board, DRB, ZBA, historical sure. commission, just so that it's easier than them going to six different boards. <laughs> I, I don't know what's easier necessarily, but we're trying to you know we're thinking if they went to so many boards a few times, all of a sudden it's like twenty meetings. Yeah. And, I'm um, imagining this fantasy land where everybody's available at the same time, and um, they and they agree on everything. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, we're meeting uh, Monday evening to the DRB, and uh, at the last meeting, because this is the other problem, is that my committee members never do their homework. Um, so at the last meeting, we decided that everybody would uh, once and for all look at the standards, take a pass, send their ideas to me. I'm going to wrestle with them a bit over the weekend and then represent a proposal. So that'll include uh, Rob's pass and then any DRB members who've also taken a look. And then I'm going to represent that. And that's going to be the grounds for discussion. Oh, good. Yeah. Cause I mean, I do think, right. The, the DRB principles are based on someone's master's thesis from like 1981. Um, you know, and Dan they're Mill good. They're, yeah, they're, they're, no, they're good. good. You know, good. and I, I, I don't know, John Kuhn or somebody down the long, long ago made those um, like kind of design drawings to right. demonstrate what we mean by X, Y, or Z. And, um, you know, those are, those are fine. Uh, we very often just reference that list of kind of nine things and um really only take them up when we have kind of like large comprehensive projects. You know, if somebody's right. doing signage, we're not going to run through all, all nine right. of those concerns, but. Yeah, no, I think the categories are good. I'm hoping Dotson, yeah. you know, will, will, you know, kind of elaborate and then, you know, um, include more. So if you think that, you know, lighting or other um, elements should be their own category of standard, then I think that's important to note yeah. because, yeah. you know, I, I agree too. It's interesting. Sometimes we'll just say like the site plan and it's like, well, I mean, a site plan is so much. It's more than you know. It's it's outdoor space. It's lighting. It's amenities. It's you know where can it be? Where is there active stuff happening? And so it's funny that sometimes even the planning board, um, you know, it's like oh look at the site plan, but there's so much to it. Uh, so much. Yeah. So no, I think that sounds really good. Um, 
yeah, it's too bad about Lindsay. I thought, you know, um, I feel like a few years ago, two summers ago, and I was at a few meetings, um, you know, Michael Burtwistle was at the, on the DRB then, and they were disagreeing about the new buildings downtown. And, yeah. um, but, you know, it was interesting hearing her perspective and, um, but, you know, he was like, well, shame on you and your, he's like, your young cohort for not coming out to meetings and supporting new architecture. And I'm just like, well, I think she said something like, well, when we get um, this kind of feedback at, you know, we don't, you know, something, cause he was like, he's pretty rude about it, but I think people have been, um, you know, they don't want to support, you know, the new development, knowing that so many people don't like it. And actually the chair of the historical commission said a few meetings ago that she came out of protocol and she walked between the two newer buildings. And she thought that the way it framed West cemetery was really nice. And, and she actually thought that, you know, because there wasn't any context when those buildings were built that, right. They were just so new and there hadn't been a lot of development, but she's like, I think I'm seeing that, you know, we could support bigger buildings downtown. Yeah. You know, maybe well, not the same stuff. Too, I think the, the reasons that people don't um, like something uh, move beyond aesthetics into things that are really difficult to quantify, mm -hmm. um, whether it be, you know, fear of change, right. The, the, the kind of nostalgia for the past um, or like I, I bristle against its height and therefore I don't like anything about it, even though the fact that 11 East Pleasant has this lovely setback that makes space on the sidewalk and accommodates with, you know, a, a, a nice retaining wall to sit on and beautiful plantings and things like those things people will like, but it's really hard to, if you don't have the, the, the language for it to, get into those nuances. So um yeah, I mean I'm hopeful that Dodson uh is yeah, I, I like that you might ask why. <laughs> yeah. Because it's 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 more so it's oftentimes it's something that's not about the building at all. <laughs> right? right. Um yeah, yeah, and, we, we yeah, we've met with them and we've told them that, you know, when Kendrick Place was first developed, they didn't like the architecture or they didn't like the use, this, it's going to be all students. Well, then after it was built, there was no noise complaints. You know, it was actually well managed. So then all of a sudden they said they said they don't like the architecture, but it was never discussed during the hearing process. And so, yeah, but I, yeah, I'm hoping Dodson. Yeah, and it's they, a brick building for crying out loud. It's like, a, yeah. <laughs> like, well, what what more could they do? We're not going to recreate the 19th century. It's like it's. Yeah, I mean that's the case. They said this is you know an adaptation of the same materials used on the Hastings block, and so it's you know we're not right. We're not going to put granite lintels over every window because we don't need to, and we're going to have big windows because we have glass now and we can do and it. That's, I mean, right. just to be completely honest, that is not what's going to get funded. The reason that we have tall buildings is that you need to have a hundred units in order to make a mm -hmm. a pro forma compatible with things like inclusionary zoning and you know it's like I it's just, yeah but, you know I mean maybe for I think it would be great if the DRB looked at this and even if you went back and said okay what do you like or don't like about a 1EP you know 1East Pleasant or some or some buildings and you know help Dodson say like is it um, you know is it certain pieces of the current standards is it the proportionality of the actual building and the mass void spaces or the, you know, whatever, right. Is it banding? It could need what's the, you know, I don't know. I mean, materials, like they want to, I think they, they want to get down to, to hear all that. I don't know how they'll distill it and present it as the final standards, but I think, you know, they're looking for that kind of feedback. And so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it'll be interesting. I mean, I, I, I don't think that the DRB, my, my senses from reading my colleagues responses to the call to kind of, look at the standards and offer changes. Um, I don't think that getting more specific is on yeah. anybody's agenda. Right. Yeah. Um, although, yeah. I guess, yeah. Yeah. No, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, the table of contents just was really specific. You know, it was like the one that Rob came up with is like, you know, there's some things like entryways, doors, windows, yes. you know, setbacks. And it was, I was like, oh, wow. Okay. They're going to go hit like, you know, it was like 50 items, you know, yeah. basically yeah, design elements to look at, but no, I, that's this all sounds pretty good. Um, as we're talking, made a note. I was going to look up the DRB spent a fair amount of time reviewing One East Pleasant. Um, I'm curious to see what kind of memo came out of that. And I was going to send it to Dodson. 
Yeah, that was before my time. I'd be curious as well. Yeah, it was the same thing. I felt they actually spent, I think it was three meetings. We talked about it. There's, you know, 40 people in the room. And then, you know, um, the developer said, well, you know, this is just same thing that kind of like you said, you don't have any authority to, you know, over this and basically like, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And then it went to the planning board and I think there was a few changes, but I, you know, I thought the DRB made really good points. They thought that the building was similar to Kendrick place and it was kind of looking um, like it was becoming a campus and maybe they could just vary a few things. Yes. Um, yeah. And they talked about setbacks. I, I thought that, you know, I thought it was a, I thought, I don't know, I thought it was a really good review and discussion. And I was, yeah. I was, I too was a little disappointed that, okay, they spent a lot of time and they were really serious about their work that, you know, ha, ha, w then it just became a, you know, something that was but no. suggested, right, to the planning board, but nothing yeah. they could act yeah. on or could use. And so, and the developer was just rude about it. Um, yeah. Well, thank goodness they mixed it up a little bit as going forward. So right. yeah. you can see those now as like bookends to... Right, right. Um, all right. Yeah, because I think, yeah, cause I, mean, I mean, honestly, I think we need to allow change downtown. And so Dotson has, you know, they've kind of uh, said that, you know, people really like the idea of community and active spaces and what's happening downtown. And if it's not your traditional brick and mortar retail, you know, what is going to bring people downtown and what are the spaces like? And so, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that they can explain that and then, you know, it's reflected in the mm -hmm. standards. So, yeah, uh, you know, yeah. Same. Tall order, though. I know. <laughs> Why do we do this? Babe? <laughs> I feel like, you're yeah, the one who's studied planning. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. We were just thought, yeah, we just had the same discussion or something. It's like the it's it's, it's an example of it. Um, fresh side has too many chairs out in front of what they're allowed uh, for oh. permitting, and so they could change it, but they'd have to go back to the permitting board, or they could reduce the number of outdoor seats, and it was fine. You know, the sidewalk gets a little narrow, and it's there's some tripping points, yeah. um, but the the owners are like, oh, we'll just take the, the few chairs out and just have fewer outside. Um, and, you know, it's like, I get it because the space isn't big, but at the same time, uh, when at a recent meeting with Dodson, we were talking about something, I, I think I said like Freshside and Antonio's to me are two really active spaces on the sidewalk and they're really nice examples. And so to say, oh, take out eight chairs. <laughs> because Yeah, right. Just because it's a pain in the neck to go back to ask for permission to right. to make that change yeah you know, yeah it's tough it's tough and you know so much of this stuff is so much of it is not code it's rent right like right. it's right. it's uh the the right. space above uh, right right has been vacant in so many of those buildings for far too long and it has little to do with with code you know right it's about upgrading buildings or providing the right space so yeah anyway all good um thank you for this feedback i'm gonna, I'm gonna if we want to try to get a call or coordinate something between the drb and maybe have dotson and flinker come to one of the meetings when things are are a little bit more finalized um, or at some point? That's a good question, Jessica. I don't know. I feel like it's a little too early to to ask for that. Because if Nate said that they're going to be circling around, like if we could provide them the information and then if they want to meet, like I'm totally up for that. But okay, um, if we're trying to limit the number of meetings that they have to, I don't know. What What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it. I feel like if we give people deadlines, they react to it. So what if, you know, we told the DRB it's like by like November 1st, you know, or the next two or three meetings, you'd like to have information, you know, packaged up to Dodson. And then yeah. if Dodson would want to come in later to discuss it, I think that's fine too. Um, so maybe, you know, that's, that's kind of the parameters, like saying like, okay, mm -hmm. we were starting it. Let's actually, we want to get this to the consultant and provide valuable information and see if, you know, that can get the members to do the homework. Um, yeah. Dot, yeah. I mean, I think Dotson's <laughs> been pretty great. We've, you know, they meet with staff. We can, we, you know, we kind of wrote in, they meet as necessary. So it's almost like, um, just into, I'm thinking if 
not to hold DRB, you know, Erica, you and like one other member, you know, we could fold it into a meeting. You know, if we have like a monthly meeting, okay. we just fold it in one time. Okay. That um, see that that sounds like a, a good a good happy medium. I'm down with that. And I do think like we're gonna meet on Monday. Chances are we were not gonna come to any resolution. So giving us a couple of <laughs> rounds to <laughs> Appreciate I'm sorry, that I couldn't help it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word! Oh boy. Um, yeah, giving us mm. a couple a couple of months to to come up with something that's a little more put together would be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're you know they're doing, you know they kind of I don't want to say that they rushed the streetscape standards, but you know we had a grant that was done uh, had to be due in July, so they're almost like backtracking a little bit. So right yeah. this fall, they're hoping to do more outreach. And we're still planning, you know, I mean, essentially it'll be a year uh, next fall, you know, or November where they would be fine, you know, be done. So they have, you know, a fair amount of time where they're still collecting input, you know, in the next, you know, four months. And so I think it's, it's a good time for the DRB to look at this. Um, you know, I think it's, it folds really nicely into their timeline and process. Okay. Great. Okay. All right, Thank you. So this is all very helpful stuff. Um, yeah. I'm on board. I'm on board then with the kind of timeline that you suggested november 1st then i i i mean i just stood out there i don't it's up to, i don't you know i was just thinking that if that could be like two or three meetings of the drb you know maybe it's like you say in the next three meetings i don't know what the timeline is necessarily but you know something like that okay um yeah we meet once a month yeah um and all right what else is on the agenda for this coming uh, meeting? Jacinta, do we so have? we have the EV charging stations for um, the parking lot behind CVS. I just Great. called it the North Prospect parking lot because I didn't mm -hmm. know what else to call it. Um, and then I haven't heard anything since, but there was somebody at 48th, I think, I think 48 North Pleasant Street who might be opening a new thrift store, but they haven't oh, yeah. come in with their application yet like they haven't mm. provided follow-up pictures and things like that so they really have till tomorrow well i posted the agenda already and i put yeah. tentative next to it just so that it's there if they come through and if they Good don't plan. then okay next time All you know right. i guess so the, it's a light agenda we'll have plenty of time for this conversation <laughs> yes. and the, the, the umass store will probably have to come in at some point too right i don't know where they are but I don't know. Is that the UMass store? Are they 48 North? Pleasant? No, no. But they, you know, they announced they're going into, um, I don't know what the number was, but where the Greenfield yeah. Savings Bank was on, like next to uh, Miss Saigon, I think. Oh, or... they're, miss they're moving again? Did they move before? No, this is new. It was in the paper. So the Amher UMass Amherst is going to have like a satellite Oh. I don't know, like bookstore. Yeah, it's not so much a store as a meeting like, space. Uh, yeah. Like trying to have a Oh, right. Town gown merger. A downtown a idea. Okay. I think it's the address is yeah, I don't know what it is. It's like uh it's between ninety six and one ten, I think, is that that building. But okay. um, I'm assuming they'll do some outdoor signage and something when that actually goes forward. But yeah. Yeah, the E V chargers, yeah, I forgot about those are um Yeah. That should be pretty straightforward. Yep. Yeah. And I okay. think I sent out the link and everything already with the site plan. So everyone should have that. But okay. if they don't, let me know. Good question. I'll look distracted for a second. My um okay. beginning of semester inbox is a bit of a okay. a bit of a scary place. Let's see. Reminder. invited to be a panelist. I don't know. Do I see it? Yeah, I'll look too. I think look up DRB meeting packet. There it is. You found it, yay. Wait, no, August 19th. Mm. Mm, I don't have another one since. No, I should say September 23rd. Let me look and see if I sent it. Anyway, I can always resend it. It's not a maybe not deal. a terrible idea. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just resend it. Yeah, we met with Doug, the chair of the planning board yesterday, and uh, Pam said, Oh, we've been sending emails. And he said the same thing. He's like, 
yeah, sometimes I don't look at my email um, that regularly, and I'm, I was thinking, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you know, you have to look at your email every day. I, this is how business gets done. But <laughs> I think he has, I think he has like two or three emails. I'm like, okay, that's just a lot. <laughs> you know, like two different accounts. You know, he has a few different accounts that he uses, and so it's just. Let me see, DRP meeting packet. Yeah, EV charges, it's an interesting thing that I think the town has a grant to install them. Yeah. Um, and then there's been questions about, you know, are they installed correctly for accessibility and other things? And it's just I'm like, oh my gosh, a lot of effort goes into getting EV chargers. <laughs> it's true. And they don't all they don't all consider accessibility. Um right. like the ones behind uh town hall, for example. <laughs> Not the most. <laughs> um uh, but yeah, this is this is good. We'll we'll raise all that up. Um, I appreciate having more. That's for sure. Okay, I'll yeah. resend it. Yeah, I don't. I'm not. I'm not ready to commit to an electric car. We went to Bar Harbor. We go to Bar Harbor in the summer for vacation. Um, yeah. And as I'm driving up there, we're like you know in the middle of nowhere, and I saw a lot of a number of electric cars. I'm thinking to myself, gosh, I'd be nervous. I have to plan my route really carefully because yeah, it's true. I they I have I've had an EV for three years. Um, and range anxiety is real. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> my, my extended family is in New Hampshire and it's like a total dead zone. So there's this whole strategy for like getting there and back. But I honestly don't think that we could do it if we were into two car family, because we can just take the Prius if we have to go farther. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, uh, cause yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I don't even pay attention with my regular, you know, my car. I just wait till the orange light comes on. And then I said, oh, I mean, that always like give you an extra gallon of gas in there. So I should, yeah. I should be able to find something. But there's, I mean, there's, it's, it's changing. It's really changing. And Amherst, you know, with, between the, the campuses and there's a fast charger, at stop and shop and whatever. And I can charge at home. I feel like here it's fine. 95% of my driving is right. 10 miles a day. So, you know, from home to yeah. work. Yeah, my mechanic says he has an electric car and he, it's great for everything, um, for commuting and daily stuff. And then he has, you know, um, I mean, he can fix up anything. So he, right, he has a gas engine for longer trips and other things. Cause, yeah. And he's an older guy. It's kind of interesting talking to him, you know, about I'm like, oh, you know, I always ask him about electric cars and hybrids and what he thinks and, you know. Well, highly recommend and ranges are getting better, you know, yeah. if you, when you're, when you're ready for something new, it, they're not cheap, but I mean, I got the, the rebates and everything. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, he's an older guy. It's so funny. I said something like, oh, my car is a hundred thousand, over a hundred thousand miles. I'm like, oh, it's getting kind of old. He's like, that's when I buy them. He's like, I buy them yeah, with 150,000. <laughs> I'm like, well, you have the ability to fix it if it, something happens. I... Right. Yeah, I know. My, my daughter is, um, the engine light came on in her car. She's like, should I just get a new car? I'm like, no. Obsessed first. Like, yeah. She's so terrified <laughs> of the whole prospect. That's not how it works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. All right. Yeah. I should go. Okay. Um, thank you all. I appreciate thank it. You. <laughs> thank you. Ideas and feedback. And, um, yeah. So, and yeah. And let's, if we think, um, just into let's talk, if we think there's a good time in the next few months, Erica, where you want to meet with Dodson, we can just okay. schedule that in. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right. We won't keep you. We know you're busy. Thanks all. You're Enjoy okay. your day. Bye. Ciao. Bye.